Hello and welcome to this video. So in this video we're going to go over some fun last minute Cricut Christmas crafts. My name is Kelly Rousseau and we're going to cover three separate super fun Christmas Cricut crafts today. The first one is going to be a gift card holder and it is going to look just like this one and it's super easy to make and you can even use my ready-made template. The second one that we're going to cover is to make some fun little treat bags. Now these are also really easy to do. I do have a template but I'm going to show you how to very easily create your own. And then the third and super super awesome craft we'll leave until a little bit later and that is going to be a super fun bookmark. Now I have lots of bookmark blanks and it's one of my favorite things to do as it's a really really easy craft. So we're going to get started with the first one which like I mentioned is going to be the super fun gift card holder. Now there's not a lot of you know crazy exciting things that you need to do for this gift card holder which is kind of why it makes it one of my favorite crafts. It is super easy to do and I really enjoy it because if you are not quite sure what to give somebody, then a gift card is really one of the greatest things to do. Especially if they have, you know, a bigger present that they might want to buy, then these are super fun crafts. So, I'm going to show you the design in Cricut Design Space. And that is this one that I have here for you. Now, this template that we have here is like I said, super basic and can be done one of two different ways. So number one, in this template, you can cut out just the plain page or just the plain outline from a nice fun patterned paper, patterned page. What I've done is I've taken a design from Creative Fabrica and just printed it out. I have used Silhouette Studio in order to be able to pattern it just like this as I find it quite easy to be able to do that. You just insert the pattern into Silhouette Studio and it patterns it beautifully for you. And then you can just print it out. You don't need, as far as I know, you don't need any of the higher design editions for this. So it is a very, very basic part, uh, thing to do. And I will show you how to do it. So let's, sh let's bring up Silhouette Studio for you. So Silhouette Studio is free to download. You don't need anything new or fancy. And in a new project, I'm going to open up the drawing tools on the left hand side of the screen, open up a rectangle and just draw it the size of the block of the page. Now my page is automatically set to A4. You can see on the right hand side it says A4. And then when it comes to the actual pattern itself, I have them saved somewhere on my computer and I just drag and drop it into Silhouette Studio. And obviously it's quite big. We want it patterned a little bit better so that we can see some more of the design. So I'm going to click on the little paint kind of palette on the right hand side of the screen. And then I'm going to go on to full pattern. Oh, and I'm not showing you my screen. <laughs> All right, that, this happens all the time, all the time, all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say hi to some of you guys. So Dre is here, Penny's here, Christine is here, Anya and Susan. Great, great, great to see you all. And sorry that I wasn't showing you my screen. I'm looking at it on my side and it's almost Christmas, you guys. I'm losing my mind at this point. <laughs> so let me start that again. So in a new canvas, we have the A4 media size as you can see on the right hand side and on the left we have the drawing tools so I'm going to click on the rectangle and draw open the rectangle pretty much the size of the page it doesn't have to be exact because your print border is not unless you have a borderless printer paper uh, borderless paper printer mine is the Epson 3150 it's unfortunately not borderless kind of almost almost gets there but not quite <laughs> And then I'm just going to drag the image into Silhouette Studio and drop it. If you don't have Business Edition or the Higher Edition, I don't think you can just drag and drop it into Silhouette Studio. You'll need to open it and that is a little bit different. 
and then I'm going to click on the fill panel on the right hand side of the screen and what I'm going to do is then go to the pattern section and here's the scale so the scale is obviously how zoomed in the printer or the, the, the pattern is and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to reduce the scale all the way down and you can see how it automatically patterns so that's literally it that's the only thing that I do there's nothing fancy to it or anything like that it's pretty pretty perfect if you don't have business edition so you'll go file open and then you'll see I've oh, these creative fabrica patterns I have just been saving them left right and center and I've been downloading them and extracting them and using them for all kinds of projects it's just so much fun I'm a little bit addicted to it at the moment so I'm going to scroll down to one of the options that we have and see which one I haven't worked on yet I've pretty much worked on all of them so let's choose this one honestly doesn't matter which one you choose and here we've now inserted this image now because I want to make it obviously bigger so when we click on the image you can then change the height and the width so I'm going to unlock the aspect ratio a lot of these things are very similar to Cricut Design Space and Silhouette Studio some work a little bit easier so I'm going to make the width 21 um, okay let's maintain the aspect ratio then so I'm going to make the width the 21 and then I'm going to double click on it and move these little you see how it opens up little a little dot so that we can just drag down and you'll see how it kind of patterns and tiles it automatically if you guys haven't used Silhouette Studio yet and you are a Cricut user, I highly suggest using it. It is so much more of a design strong software that you can use and I honestly use it for so many different things. So I'm just going to zoom out. And now we have main kind of the A4 size. So I'm going to once again go to the pattern and then open up the pattern full. And then I'm going to decrease the scale. So you can see how I achieve exactly the same result as what I have in this option. Just a, a different way of doing it. So if you don't have the business edition, which is a once-off fee, you don't have to pay for it again. It, you can save them as SVGs. You can save them as PNGs. It's just it's a game changer for designing software, designing fun things, all those kinds of things. It's just I love it. Love it. Love it. And then you can just say, or you can actually just print this straight. So you can just go, you know, control P or file print. And then it'll open up a print preview. And then you, I don't have any paper in my printer right now. So I'm not going to print this one because I've kind of gone a little bit crazy when it comes to printing off paper. I've got so many printed. And then I just use that as my patterned paper to cut my design art design out of. Penny asks, how much is Business Edition? So Business Edition, I think it regularly goes on sale for about $50, if I'm not mistaken. I can just do a quick double check for you. And let's just show Silhouette Studio again. You can normally find it on Swing Designs. Um, and it's, like I said, it's well, well, well worth it. I'm just trying to look for the software the silhouette accessories again I don't have my 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 glasses on um, there we go silhouette studio business edition it's normally a hundred dollars but it regularly goes on sales so I wouldn't recommend buying it at a hundred dollars to be completely honest there we go what happens when you try and have too many things open at once so there we go it's now on sale for fifty dollars so you can do all of these amazing like you can save them as svgs you can save them as pngs you can use it with a cricut but you have to then save the design to your computer and upload it into cricut design space you can't cut from the software you use the software to design things it's I've got quite a few videos on my channel if you want to go and take a look at how to use Silhouette Studio and how to create SVGs and things like that. It's it's very versatile and I honestly highly recommend, highly recommend getting to learn it. 
see what you can do. It's great. Okay, so with this template that I have created, I'm going to share it with you guys and you'll be able to use this exact gift card holder. So you'll just be able to just cut this one. In this project, I actually have two different versions. So if I just zoom out, you'll be able to see both of them. So that is the, the one option that we have. You can either cut it out of cardstock and then cut this part out of patterned paper and stick it on top, which we will do today. Or you can try the other one that I have, which is just a different design. And it's just a, a little bit of a rounded off one. So it's a little bit more plain. The other one is just a little bit more fun. Is the free version for commercial use. So I, it's not really commercial or private use. It's just the free software. You're just limited to the amount of things that you can do. You can't save as PNGs, JPEGs, or SVGs. You can only save as their Studio 3 files. So it's not, I mean, you can use it for commercial use if you want to, but you'll just, you won't be able to export anything. So you kind of need Business Edition in order to be able to use it with your Cricut properly. You can save PNGs, I think, with Designer Plus. But with, I don't recommend getting any of the other versions of Silhouette Studio. I only ever recommend getting the business edition. The price difference is so small and it's just so worth it. So we're going to cut the one on the right, this one. And as you would have seen, I have writing on it. So if you want to add writing onto the gift card, you don't want to do your own handwriting. You can just cut the plain template and then add your writing. Make sure to put your writing upside down because when you cut this, you're going to cut it out of your paper and it's going to look like that. But when you close the gift card holder up, the writing is then going to be the right way around. So you want to make sure that when you're working with it in Cricut Design Space, that your writing is actually upside down. So that's just one tip if you wanted to add that on there. But we're not going to do writing on this one. We're just going to cut it out of white cardstock. And then I'm going to cut out the little embellishment type pieces out of just a, a colored cardstock. So one that I've already printed. So I'm going to delete the writing layers. As I don't need those. <laughs> And this is just, like I said, it's a super quick craft. So all we're going to do is we're just literally going to cut this out of different cardstock. So I'm going to click make. And these are the kind of last minute crafts that I'm, that I absolutely love. And I don't need to make any adjustments here. I do want to make an adjustment. I want to make sure that that cuts at the top and those two cut underneath because it's going to be out of patterned paper. So I'm just going to make sure that they line up very well. So that's the only adjustment that I would make there. Going to continue. Connect to the machine. I'm going to start on mat one. So I'm going to start on the cardstock and I'm going to use cardstock for intricate cuts because I want to be able to cut out those little flaps to hold the, the gift card. I want those people to cut out very easily. Again, I'm going to be changing it from the single scoring wheel to the scoring stylus. As I find, if I'm just scoring two straight lines, I almost always exclusively use the stylus. It's just a lot easier to use. And then we are going to go over to the Cricut and load it up onto our mat and cut it out. There we go. All right. So let's bring you over here so that you can see me oh, and not the ceiling <laughs> as it always does because I'm unfortunately not able to have more than one camera. So I have to make do with adjusting the ones that I do have. There we go. All right. Has everybody, is everybody ready for Christmas? Christmas is in two days. 
so it's very exciting and daunting all at the same time. I'm going to cut out a, I'm going to use a piece of spare cardstock that I have. Love the festive nails. Oh, thank you, Susan. I absolutely love doing my nails. I actually have red toes at the moment. There's just little, these are little baubles. You can kind of see those. Super fun. Super, super fun. So I'm going to put my scrap piece of cardstock because I try and use as much cardstock as I can. My scrap pieces. For once you are, crafting and wine. Ooh, that's so much fun. Not even close to being ready. <laughs> Going to be wrapping gifts while watching. Oh, that is a great idea. I mean, I would say I'm wrapping gifts at the same time, but um, I suppose the more accurate thing would be that my husband is wrapping gifts. <laughs> Can you use an old version of Silhouette's software? Mine is about 10 years old. Yes, you can. But if you're not using like a Silhouette Cameo 1, I would recommend updating because there are lots of fun new features that you can use in the newer versions. And it's there's no real reason if you're not using the old Cameos to up update. Okay, so we're going to load this in. I'm just going to show it to you on the side, so you're going to look at it sideways. Cute nails, Christine says. You have baby blue French manicure. Ooh, lovely, with snowflake nails. Dre says she's celebrating tomorrow night by going to the Nutcracker Ballet at the Marinsky. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, Theatre as you're working on Christmas. Oh, what? Does, what? that sucks. I'm sorry. Um, and I'm going to click play and we are going to cut that. It is from your portrait. So I would, Jackie, I would check to make sure that the newer versions of Silhouette Studio support your portrait because you should be able to try with some of the newer versions anyway, just for software capabilities and things. It shouldn't, your, the older software, the newer software, some, some of the versions should still support the portrait as well. Susan says she normally wraps after dinner on Christmas Eve, so I guess you're actually a way ahead of schedule. That is, that's a very good way of looking at it. I'm also quite ahead of schedule. Okay. We're giving it a cut, and it's just cutting out. So that's just quite simply what we need to do for the gift card holder. We just pull it out just like that. And then if we want to make it look super fun, I'm going to use my light grip mat. And I'm also going to put my cardstock, I mean my printed card sideways. So that it cuts correctly in the little sections and of course if you are running out of time and you don't have a lot of time to be able to cut these then you can absolutely just cut the cardstock one this adds a little bit of extra to it but you really don't have to and i'm going to put this one on i'm going to cut this on the light cardstock setting because it is about 175 gsm paper You love how easily that came out, I know. When your cut settings are just right, it is perfect. <coughs> Zoe used to wrap on... <coughs> Man, I just unloaded it but instead of starting it. <coughs> you haven't done any Christmas shopping. Oops, that is a big oops. Zoe says she used to wrap on Christmas Eve when the kids were in bed, but now they're awake after me as they're adults, so you did it when they were in college and work. That's very clever. Very clever. But also look at how beautifully this cut here. So basically when you have your card, this is going to easily 
stick on go underneath these little sections here. And it just easily cuts out the the card there, which is super nice. Very, uh, very useful. Okay. I'm going to unload that. And I'm just going to take this off here. There we go. Also comes off really easily. Perfect. And of course the printed cardstock does all the work for you. So you don't even have to worry about it not, not working and not looking nice. Because once you've stuck everything down, it looks so beautiful. Gift cards for the grandkids, no time to shop with your dad being in hospice. Oh, I'm sorry, Jackie, but I hope that everything goes well. Okay, so we're just going to add a very light amount of glue to this one. And then add it onto the card. There we go. And there. Now with these you want to make sure to get into those little areas there. Pick it up, place it down. And I like using liquid glue here because it it's easier if you it's easier to get it accurate if you need to move it around a little bit. Let's just zoom you in a little bit more. There we go. And also just shows you just how quick these actually these crafts actually are, which is why I kind of wanted to do them also last minute. For those of you that maybe forgot to give a gift to somebody, um, I mean it happens all the time, or a last minute guest gets added to the day's roster, something like that. So there, that's what your your gift card holder looks like and then you can just fold it on the score lines <laughs> I can't wait Dre and I'm going to um, hire winter season and only be able to wear it in 2025 <laughs> because it's um, something that you would wear in the middle of winter I mean yeah so and we have just dropped something on the floor and we have summer we're in the middle of summer at the moment so i actually have my aircon running at the moment because the room is locked the the, the doors and things like that are closed so so we can take our our gift card i just wanted to cover up the numbers because this is an actual gift card and then what you do is you just pop that up there on that one side and then you pop the other one up on the other side and then the gift card just sits there in the middle and you can close it up. Now you can take a spot of glue and put it on that side but if you don't want to glue it together One of my thing, favorite things to do is to have some twine lying around that kind of fits. So you can do, um, how do you do it? You start at the top and then you go down to the bottom and you twist it over. I might need a little bit more twine. You twist it over. And then you can cut it off. Okay, there we go. So at least now I know roughly how much I need to cut. So we cut it off like that. So basically what I did 
for those of you that may have missed that. You take your twine or your raffia or whatever you want to use. You start at the top. You lay that down kind of in the middle. You flip your gift card over. And then you turn these pieces so that they are just like that. You flip that over so that you're on the front. And then you tie it down. See, I didn't quite level this out all that well, but that's also fine. And then we can tie it another time. There we go. And I mean, that can be your gift card, if you, your gift card holder if you want it to be. Or you can add some other fun things to it. But again, it depends on how much time you actually have available to you. Because they, you might not, you might not have all that much time. So that's one super easy Christmas craft and that's very little time to do it in. So that's kind of why these are some of my favorite ones. <laughs> Sorry, my ribbon tying is distracting Dre, I apologize. <laughs> and the second one that we were going to do is the, the gift bag, the little treat bag covering. Now for this, I like to use the smart sticker cardstock and I like to use just because it's it's a little bit easier but if you don't have this you can get the same effect on normal sticker paper you can use normal cardstock and just write on it I find this just a little bit easier because it already has the sticker layer on it so it's kind of one less step to have to do oh thank you Susan yeah, I just added that as a, I actually got an inspiration from another project in Design Space to add the wavy, wavy part in the front. Um, it's just a little bit, it's something a little bit different. So I quite, quite liked this one. So yes, the next project is going to be the one in Design Space. And let's go done there. And I'm going to open it up here to make it smaller for you so that you can all see. So it's called, well, when I was younger, we always, at Christmas time, we always used to get reindeer poop <laughs> on Christmas morning. A little bag of reindeer poop as a thank you from Santa. Now, for those of you that have young nieces and nephews or young grandchildren or anything like that, this is a super fun project to do for them. So you absolutely can use my project as well for this again just share i just um check the link down below um, i will add links to this i don't think i've added this particular link yet but this link will be down in the description if i open up my stuff and check under my christmas projects i can actually share the link with you now but it is already shared on my profile from last year so i'm going to open it up copy the link for you and then go back to my canvas so I'm going to share the link for you if you want to see this one you can use this exact project so what I'm going to do for this one is detach this because I only want to show you guys one of them because to to do all of these takes a really long time so this is a really nice project to get going if you have a lot of little gifts to do so you can set it up it'll automatically start drawing on your machine this is set to um, the smart sticker cardstock pages so it is quite wide if you don't have smart sticker paper you'll need to decrease the size to 29.2 centimeters or 11 and a half inches so just remember that before you get started as you can see when we select all of them the current size is 29.7 so I'm going to take out, apparently that one was attached as well. So let's detach that. And then we're just going to make one of them. Now the packet that I have that we are going to use for this one is, my ruler is being held hostage by all of the stuff on my desk 
So the packet that we have for this one is around 12 centimeters, as you can see here. But I do have a slightly smaller packet. So we can actually use one of these. I generally like to keep little a, a stash of bags like this just for for exact projects like this where we can have you know multiple different sizes and things like that so what i would what i what you can do is then just measure this one so this one is just over seven centimeters wide or just over just under three inches so i'm going to then take the design in design space and resize it so that it is just over seven centimeters just so that it fits my packet because I want to make sure that you know it fits and I we used to get this I see that Susan said she used to, to her daughter made reindeer poop in school and she got snowman poop from a class gift that's great especially with it's um white chocolate little malted puffs or something like that for years and years and years we didn't get any reindeer poop because we were a bit older and then when I got my cricket, I was finally able to make them. So I've just started making my own now. <laughs> so I'm going to click make. Again, it's a project that's already set up for us. We don't have to worry about anything. And I'm going to change this from on a mat to without a mat. Because I'm obviously going to be cutting it on the smart sticker cardstock. And we're going to click continue. Connect to the machine. <clears throat> now normally you would select smart paper sticker cardstock but I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to change this to on a mat and I'm going to cut out that piece and stick it on a mat my for some reason my smart paper sticker setting it does not cut through at all so I'm actually just going to be pretending as if this is on a mat and I'm going to be cutting it like that and I'm going to be using the craft board setting because it is quite a thick craft or quite a thick paper now the reason I do that is because when it comes to cutting smart materials you cannot recut I don't know if you, any of you have noticed that, but if you do a cut, you cannot just click play and recut it again. It automatically wants to spit it out. So when you do smart paper or when you're doing smart materials, you have to make sure that you do your test cuts beforehand. So this is kind of a method that I've figured out that works for me for this particular material. And if you haven't done test cuts on your smart materials, then just try this method <laughs> because it um, is a pain when it doesn't cut through so what I'm going to do is transition to this side hello Vilamin, welcome and like I said I'm going to be cutting out the actual size of the sticker which I think was about seven centimeters by about let's take eight centimeters by about ten centimeters um, so there is just under ten and here is about not so I'm gonna cut about nine centimeters And then I'm going to cut this and load this onto my standard grip mat. So we're going to take this off. <laughs> Glad to see everybody in such a good mood on ground uh, Christmas time. Let's do that. And we're going to stick it onto... <laughs> they are my kind of they are my teflon scissors so these scissors you'll see they have a black coating on them so when you're cutting sticky things the sticky residue doesn't stick to the scissors so whenever i'm cutting vinyl or 
things like that then i like to use these they are they also kind of these ones are a little bit worked out there so the teflon has come off but i still like to use them anyway and i'm going to load it into my cricket And I'm going to load in my pen. I'm going to do a small test in the corner just to see if this pen stands out. And it does stand out quite nicely, so I'm going to use my red glitter pen. And that is then going to start drawing and carrying on there. Teflon coating doesn't help if you make a mistake. You're using Recollections foam tape from Michaels. Oh no, that's terrible. <laughs> I'm sorry. So also, not all not all Teflon scissors were created equal, and some of the Teflon scissors that I have used in the past, like like especially like these ones, the Teflon coating comes off quite easily. But these are the X cut scissors, so I don't think that you even get these in the US. So don't stress. Okay, so while that draws. We're going to prep this. So I've just got a nice big bag of chocolate raisins. This was uh, 175 Rand, I think, um, for a 900 gram bag, so not bad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to try and not handle them as much as possible and pour some into the bag. So we don't need a crazy amount in the bag and we're going to pull off that coating and then seal the bag up so that it is ready for when we want to add the I'm even going to cut this off because I don't need I don't need that part of the sticker of the packet And then I suppose the most important part of giving somebody food source or food items is QA. So you have to, it is just an absolute given, you have to have at least two of them just to test to see that, oh, I'm trying to run away, just to test to see that they're not going to kill your family members. Because that's very important. <laughs> oh, Susan. And by not handle them, you mean you don't sneak a few? No, I I will constantly, 100%, sneak a few. Here or there. <laughs> QA is very important with any craft. I love my family. And I want to make sure that they're getting not only just the best, but that they are going to be safe. And that if anything is going to happen, it's going to happen to me first. <laughs> Quality control, yes. Yes, Christine, 100%. While we wait for that to continue drawing, <laughs> you have to sneak a few, Letty, 100%. So, with prep for the next one, we're going to do some bookmarks. Now, for those of you in South Africa, these styles are available at Perfectly Crafted bookmarks. Well, these style of bookmarks are available at Perfectly Crafted. I bought... I've just bought, I've received these today from her. Um, they are some of my favorite styled bookmarks. Um, there we go. Especially these ones, because they're just a little bit different. So I'm going to try and keep them in the middle here for you guys. I'm not sure how she packaged these, so I might need to go through them. Yes, those are all the same. Okay. Yes, these are a one millimeter um, uh, acrylic because when it comes to your books and protecting the integrity of the spine, I prefer to use one mole acrylic over a two mole. Um, they, you can engrave on them as well. You absolutely can. That's maybe actually another project that I should do. 
not in this video, but um, definitely in the future. And then the last one is there. So these are super nice bookmarks, like I said. It's a one millimeter acrylic and they've got a few different styles. So these ones are fun because they have the wide, the wide gap at the top. So when it comes to using them, you can actually put like a nice ribbon at the top, something that you wouldn't be able to put on a normal bookmark. And this one is just one that I took a design of and adjusted it. It says, I still read fairy tales. They're just dirtier now. <laughs> so that's one of the bookmarks that I've been playing around with and having fun with. And then another one is a book a day keeps reality away. I haven't added a fun part onto this one yet. And then the third one is I's, I's been thinking of you, a thinking about you. This one was an absolute nightmare, purely because the thing, the details are so, so, so small. I mean, just look at those actual books in the top. <laughs> it was, it, you have to have your cut settings perfect in order to get these kinds of details. So, I mean, if we look at the weeding tool, look at the size of the weeding tool compared to the size of those little stars and the size of the little things in the bookmarks. It's just crazy, 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 crazy. Yes, Susan. I will actually, I'll try and make um, my own version of this. The reason why I'm saying I can't share it is because this design I got from Silhouette Studio a silhouette design store and I just kind of shifted around to make sure that it fit on this size bookmark because obviously all the bookmarks are different different sizes different widths lengths etc so I kind of just took their design which so then I can't share it it's not it's not my design not my intellectual property to be able to share <laughs> yes Susan I almost did I almost did the reindeer poop is now finished so we're going to unload it there we go. So it actually cut clean through the backing, which is great because now it is done. And we can then tear the backing off. And like I said, the reason why I use the smart paper sticker, it's not smart paper sticker cardstock is because it's already um, sticky. So I'm going to just give it a light fold around the top here, not making sure to stick it down too much. I'm going to then stick it on the actual packet and then just fold that over and stick it on the back. There we go. And if you want to make it this, if you want to make this just a square block, then you absolutely can. And I will show you how to do this. And then we can start moving on the magn on the magnifying glass. I saw magnifying glass there. And then we can start working on the bookmark as well. So that's just a nice little light, small gift that you can give to somebody as, you know, a, an extra or to the grandkids or something like that. So now we have the, so if we want to do our own, we can add a shape to the canvas. It can be a rectangle or let's add just a square. Then you make the square, the size that you want to have your label. So as an example, ours was seven centimeters wide. So we're going to make it 7.5, let's say. And then the height, you want to have double because you want to have it on the front and the back. So now you can add whatever text you want onto it. Rain, I think there is actually a design for reindeer poop. So let's just look under the images. Reindeer poop. There we go. There's a design. You can even print and cut some of them as well if you want to. Or you can have a little poop sign that you add to the canvas 
and make it super easy. I'm just zooming in, making that smaller. I'm going to take out that layer, make that one also smaller. And I'm going to change the operation. So with the design selected, I'm going to change the operation from basic cut to pen so that we can draw the design, the outline. And I'm going to do the same for the poop as well. I'm going to change that to pen. If you want to fill it in, because it's not going to fill that, actually, it's not going to fill that in at all. So I want to make the reindeer poop a little bit bigger. Make it a little bit bigger. I always resize it before I fill it in. So I'm going to click on offset. And instead of a positive offset, I'm going to use a negative offset. So I'm going to go negative 0.03. And you can see then it now fills it in on the inside. And I'm just going to click doing, keep doing that until it's all filled in the way that I want to. And then I'm going to do the same for the other one. So I just click offset and apply, offset and apply. And now it's filled in. So you don't have to worry about, about, not, about it not looking nice. I'm going to move the block away, select all of that, attach, all right, move the block back. I'm going to select that design again, right click, duplicate, and then I'm going to rotate it. So I'm going to just hover over one of the corners and rotate it so that it is upside down. And I'm going to put it on the other side of the packet. And there we go. So we have our own little reindeer poop perfectly lined up. You can align it to the center horizontally as well if you like. And then you can attach. And that's quite literally as simple as what you need to do for this to have a super cool design. <coughs> Watch out for the reindeer poop and then leave it as a treat for the delivery people. Yes. Um, so Penny asks, can you use Silhouette Studio designs with a Cricut? You can. You have to buy the SVG file from the design store if you wanting to use them and import them into Cricut Design Space. So you can just design them, download them straight from um, Silhouette the Design Store and import them into Cricut Design Space, or you can make significant adjustments and whatnot, and then use them in Silhouette Studio and then save them as an SVG. But that that process is a little bit more complicated. So that's one of the other designs that you can have, and I'm actually going to save that one as well. So I'm going to save, and I'm going to save as reindeer poop stickers. Um, I'm going to call it V2. And then I will share this project with you guys as well later on. I'm going to add it to my Christmas collection. All right. So I'm going to click on my stuff again as this is another one of the projects that I have made and have already used a few times. As you can see, I've got lots of projects in my design space because I like creating things all the time. And I tend to go right past the projects that I want. So I should actually just search for the project. There we go. I'm looking for my bookmarks. And this one is also shared in my... Um, profile as well so you should be able to access this one and use it so I'm going to click customize and again this is another project where you can just use somebody else's project and just cut it straight away I'm going to first size the project though so when it comes to looking or using these bookmarks I first want to make sure that the sizing is correct for the bookmark that I'm using <clears throat> is there any way you can do a video to show how to import them into design space you mean how to import the design so you would just upload the design like you would normally upload a design there's no there's no difference um so right so i've taken my ruler and i'm just measuring it from the bottom of that line to here and we've got 10 and a half centimeters and it's four centimeters wide so one and a half inches but it depends on the size of your particular bookmark. So you'll need to measure your own bookmark. I'm going to be using this one. 
so that is the one we're going to work the sizes off. You are most welcome, Penny. So I'm going to make sure that the size is right. So it's 11 centimeters. So I'm actually just going to shorten it a little bit. I know that you shouldn't normally do that, but I don't want to make it too much bigger. And then this one as well, I'm also going to shorten that to 10 and a half. Ten point one, and then this one is ten point five, which should be just fine. I think that bottom corner there might pop out a little bit, but that's all right. We can deal with that later. And then I'm just quite simply going to. Oh, I'm not showing you guys my screen again. <laughs> I just resized the design. Didn't do anything, anything crazy. So I just resized it just like that to around 10 and a half centimeters or 10 centimeters and then just clicked make that's quite literally all that i did nothing nothing crazy so then we're going to cut this out of adhesive vinyl and i'm going to cut this out of a different color of adhesive vinyl so i'm going to do maybe we can do black with this one and pink with that one just because i'm going with a the pink theme at the moment so I'm going to click next, continue. There are quite a few bookmark projects in Design Space, so you can search for ones that are relevant to you and you don't have to worry about the design. We're in crunch time at the moment. We need to make sure that we're getting our stuff done. So I'm going to cut mine on premium vinyl permanent glossy because that's the cut setting that I know works well for this particular vinyl that I like to use. And I am going to be using a nice sticky mat, so I don't have to worry about anything moving around. So when it comes time to actually cutting it, I... Um, oh, my black vinyl is on. There we go. So I'm just going to take this off the mat. And then add on my vinyl. I wonder how big this piece is. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to cut this here. <coughs> As this piece of vinyl is big enough for what I need to do here. So I'm going to just use this. And use my brayer. To make sure that it's stuck down well onto the mat. Is that something underneath? Yes, it was. Whenever you have, if you're doing fine, intricate designs, if you have things on your mat, like here, we can see there are little dots and whatnot where the vinyl is coming up. Now, if you have these kinds of things on your mat, then it is actually going to affect the way that the vinyl cuts because the blade is going to move to go over those. So I always try, if I'm cutting intricate things like this particular design isn't too intricate, so it's fine. But if I were cutting a very intricate design, I would always make sure to get those off the mat so that when I press it down, it then sits much better and that those little bumps are now no longer there so just keep a note of that i mean there are lots of little things here as you can see little bumps but a lot of these will not really affect the cut of it too much like if we look at this one this one right here might affect the cut so i just lift up the backing try and get it off the mat where it was and then you can see it's now it's now gone. It's now no longer there. So I've got a better chance of getting a more accurate cut because my vinyl is on a sticky mat. It has no bumps and things, no major bumps where I'm going to be cutting my design. And I've used my brayer to make sure that it is very, very stuck down. Hi, mom. <laughs> Thank you for joining. 
and I'm going to then load it into my machine taking my pen out because we don't need the pen anymore welcome camper 1965 thank you for joining and we're now going to just quite simply cut the vinyl and while we wait for that to cut I'm going to grab my pink vinyl which has run away from me I think I packed it away which is fine So I'm going to be using the pink from the Cricut sampler set just because it's what I have lying around. Hello, Nami. <laughs> yeah, Gina. Gina is my mom. My mom. So I was going to say my mom's mom. And then I was like, no, no, just my mom. <laughs> and I think she's very excited to be able to join a live stream today, which is great. Welcome. Thank you for joining, mom. And everybody else. It's good to have everybody here. Always very exciting. Especially when we, we get to have lots of people. So for those of you that are just joining, we made these reindeer poop. It's done with smart, smart sticker cardstock. And it's just stuck onto the top of a little treat bag with some chocolate raisins. And the other one that we made that I'm quite fond of myself, already getting swallowed, is this one. So this is a little gift card holder that I've just wrapped up with a little bit of twine and the gift card then sits on the inside just like that and you can it like sits just at the back there so it's a nice pretty gift card just like that gift card holder Okay, so that vinyl has finished cutting, but I first want to check the cut before removing it from the mat, for, before removing it from the machine. Okay, it has cut very nicely, so I'm going to just unload. You can see there I did that little test cut where I took it out, and I'm going to take it off the mat and add on my pink. As you can see, I've used this a few times and made a few different designs. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to cut it like that. This is going to be a very easy cut at least. There we go. And we just load this into the mat. And I'm going to select Premium Vinyl Permanent Glossy again, and then that's going to cut. All right. Now, when it comes to weeding, first of all, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to cut this down so that I'm not cutting unnecessarily. I'm not weeding unnecessary vinyl. So I'm going to cut it down just like that. And then use the other piece of vinyl for another project. So this piece of vinyl is enough for another bookmark. So why not keep this and use that? Okay. So that is now all done. I'm going to put that off to the side for now. And then weeding intricate designs. When it comes to weeding super intricate things, now this design isn't very intricate. So while it can still be challenging, it's not going to be too challenging. So I like to weed out all of the inside pieces first. So like that one is an example. And then the inside of the O's. 
or any other letters that may have any inside pieces. I like to weed those all out first. So I just use my weeding tool. Just bring you guys a little bit closer. So we're going to be doing some intricate work now. And I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So we just weed those out. And occasionally I'll flip the piece of vinyl over and then just pick it up with my finger just like that. So I'll just flip it over so that the sticky part is facing up and then just pick it up with my finger because I find that easier than trying to lift it up off the page. If there are pieces of vinyl that are stuck to the greater part of the vinyl but have you know very small joins, Sometimes I'll just weed those up too, just to make sure that they come out a little bit easier. But it looks like this cut setting is beautiful, so uh, wrong part of the book. And then we just weed out the spine. And then we just continue to weed out all of the little inside pieces. That part of the book seems to have grabbed onto something else. So we'll just leave that one there. And then we can grab from the top corner and then just weed out the rest of the design on the outside. And go slowly if you can. And don't worry about pieces that you've left behind like that. I'll very often come back to that at the end and then just weed that out. So like this piece, I'm just pressing it down because I made a little oopsie there, but that's fine. There we go. And then if the pieces of the vinyl come up like that. I'll just press them down and carry on weeding gently. There we go. Then I'll also use this piece of the vinyl to then pick up the pieces of vinyl that I have stuck to my finger. There we go, so now my fingers are clean. Just use it to dab it up. Love the reindeer poop. Thank you. <laughs> Missed one of them there. And then I pull up this piece as well. Okay. So many books, so little time. And that really is a big problem at the moment. <laughs> I see where I went wrong with the first one. I tried to lift the wrong part. Okay, that's fine. We can salvage that by just ripping off the pages there and nobody will be none the wiser. So I've just taken off the pages on the one side just because I started weeding the wrong part and um, there's a little bit of a line there so I'll just fix that with my craft knife so that it looks like it was supposed to be like that There we 
we go. See? So all I did was I just cut that part cleanly so that there were those, none of those parts were sticking off. And now it just looks like the person is almost at the end of their book. <laughs> Lucky for them. <laughs> you do that quite often. Yep, it happens to all of us. So not even people that do this uh, for a living get it right all the time. And you know what? That is okay. As long as you know how to solve the problem, that's kind of the most important part. And that's why I like to leave things like that into my videos and to make mistakes on lives and do lives to show you guys that things happen, you make mistakes. All right. Now, this next trick is a little bit interesting. This is double-sided tape. So I just take a small piece of double-sided tape, an inch or so, and I'm going to plop it down here, right in the middle of the screen on my desk. Now the reason why I do this is because when I'm working with my bookmark, I like to stick my bookmark down to the table so that it doesn't move. All right, so I'm going to take off the clear sheet on the top of my bookmark. Well, the it's the actual sheet of the covering of the acrylic is blue. The sheet of the clear bookmark, I should rather say. And I'm going to take off the covering of the double-sided tape, but I'm not going to throw that away. Now I'm going to place my bookmark down onto the double-sided tape. So you can see there, the double-sided tape is just there in the middle. Now, when I want to line things up, I don't have to worry about my bookmark moving around. It stays in one place. So I'm going to get my transfer tape. I'm going to actually cut it in half. And I'm going to apply it so that there is more space at the top of the transfer tape. So you see there's a bit of a gap at the top here than there is at the bottom. And luckily everything in my room is within an arm's, arm's reach because my room is nice and small. So I'm going to burnish this onto my vinyl. Turn it over, burnish it on from the back, and I should just be able to remove my transfer tape relatively easily. So I always do this with the transfer tape facing down on the page, so that if things come up, then I can just plonk it back down. Oh, sorry for the noise and the disturbance on your ears. Now, I take a piece of parchment paper and I lay it on top of the bookmark and I lay the transfer tape so that the part sticking out sticks out like that. And now we line it up. So we can see the shape of the bookmark through the transfer tape or through the parchment paper. So I'm going to just make sure that it's underneath that top line there. I can even move it up a little bit or I can move it down. I try and make sure that it is as centered as possible. Again, keeping in mind that I am a human being, I'm not a machine. So occasionally you may get it a little bit wrong, but that's fine. As long as it's not glaringly wrong, it's it's all right. I'm gonna lift up the part, the transfer tape remove the parchment paper and now is where I like to do one of two things so I like to look for my there we go my water so I'm going to take a spray bottle of water this is there's nothing else in here just water give it a little bit of a spray then I take my transfer my scraper start scraping from the top and scrape down. Now this is not as critical for this step, but if you're not going to put anything on your vinyl on the back of the, the bookmark, then this part is very important. 
because now when you're lifting this up and when you take this off okay, let's just make sure that we've got all the bubbles out okay and we're going to remove the transfer tape there we go perfect and now I don't really want to do this with Now we just take it off the desk and dry it down on a piece of material or something like that. I normally just dry it off on my top. Or if you have a cloth nearby or just a normal piece of material, you can just dry it off. And there we go. The double-sided tape stuck to the bookmark, so I'm just going to take that off and plonk it back on the table. Somewhere in the middle. There we go. I don't need it right now, so I'm actually going to put that little piece of tape covering back on. Next, I'm going to take off the other side of the backing. So the actual acrylic blank is clear, but the protective sheet makes it blue. This is um, Zoe uh, Eileen says, good evening from Holland. You're painting a bookmark for your journal right now. Almost cricket time. Oh, that's exciting. That's very exciting. So if you see at the back of this bookmark, there are no bubbles. Oh, there's a little bit of a bubble there where, and you can just easily squish that one out. But you see how there's pretty much no bubbles anywhere on this vinyl. And this is obviously at the back. That's the front. So it's very nice to use this method if you want to have bubble-free vinyl. And now, I honestly don't even bother with cutting this out of the sheet and weeding it. I will just, first of all, spray the back of my bookmark with water. And then I just use my weeding tool very gently on the edge of the little paint splotch and go underneath so that I can pick up this piece of vinyl that we've cut. I don't use transfer tape, I just pull it straight out of the backing. No need to make this more difficult than what it should be. And then that was the top and that was the bottom. So I'm now going to lay this down Because there's water on there, you can often move the splotch around quite a bit. So if you don't like where it's placed, you can actually pick it up relatively, so often quite easily. I'm not going to do it now. It, didn't, it's, it doesn't want to. But I'm going to push the vinyl up, push the vinyl down, and get all of the bubbles out. that want to get out and then again just press it on your clothes and then double check that you've gotten all the bubbles out if you haven't just go back in again and try and squeeze any of those bubbles or watermarks to the outside of the vinyl Here we go. And then when you turn it over, you will be able to see if there are any bubbles or anything like that. And it looks pretty much perfect. Maybe one or two here and there, but those we can get out no problem. And that's pretty much the bookmark done. I mean, the fun part now is just to add a piece of ribbon. So then you can take a nice piece of ribbon and tie it like that on your bookmark. Or the way that I did the other way is to fold it in half and kind of make a triangle 
with the ribbon so that it looks a little bit like an arrowhead, like that. <coughs> Feed it through the front of the bookmark just so that that part goes through. And then take the bottom part of the ribbon and oh, sorry, and feed it up through that little triangle. So that it kind of covers it and it looks like a nice, a nice little thing like that. And of course you can take a torch or a, la a lighter or something like that and just singe the ends just so that it looks neat and it doesn't fray because obviously ribbon frays quite often. So that's just, P.S. loving the pink, you want them to be stolen. Dre, you know that all, if you want a bookmark from me, all you have to do is ask. I will make and give you one with lots of love in my heart. So yeah, perfect little bookmark. Super, super easy. Again, super quick craft. Maybe this one is the, the longer of the three crafts that we made tonight. But it just shows you, like, you don't have to... It doesn't have to be something that takes you an incredibly long time to be a fun craft. Um, I've just messed this one up when I showed the rest. So let me just get this back to where it was originally. For those that have just joined, the first one that we made was a fun gift card holder. So this is the gift card holder, which looked gr better a few minutes ago, <laughs> but it still looks pretty good. It's just wildly off center now, which I suppose the only person it'll probably bother is me anyway. But you can also purposefully make it wildly off center as well by having it you know look like that or something like that and then of course we made the reindeer poop so three very quick easy fun cricket crafts that you can make lots of at the same time it's just let me put those two over there and put that one over there Oh, it's actually in the order in which we made them anyway. So that kind of makes sense. So, yeah. Do you guys have any... If you have any questions about this, you're welcome to, you know, leave a comment or say something in the chat if you've joined the live stream. And for those of you that were unable to catch the live stream, definitely keep an eye out on social media and on the channel for any lives that may pop up in the future because I do plan on doing some more next year. For those of you that celebrate Christmas, I hope that you have an absolutely awesome Christmas day in two days time, which is quite scary to think. For those of you that don't celebrate Christmas, I hope you have a wonderful holiday season and enjoy some time off if you get to take any time off. And I really, really had so much fun making these crafts with you guys. You better make the reindeer poop first because you'll just have an empty bags if you wait until you're done making everything else. Yes, Susan, you are 100% correct. I need to make sure that I make the reindeer poop very, very early. I'm definitely going to going to make some of those soma now. <laughs> but I had a lot of fun. Thank you all so very much for joining. Have the absolute best Christmas, New Year's. I won't be uploading any more videos until after New Year's or until New Year's Day, maybe. And yeah, I'm going to take some time off, read some books, use some, make some fun bookmarks and things like that. And I just want to say thank you very much for all the support throughout the year. It has really been an incredible year. And I think we're ending on just under 35,000 subscribers at the moment. So I'm very, very blessed and grateful to have all of you here with me. I love you all very much. Thank you all so very much for joining. And I will see you very, very soon. And remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon. <laughs>